All aboard your Tech News Games and Deals Caboose. We have some Radeon 7 announcements, some Ryzen 3000 previews, and some game news to go over. So let's start off with the AMD CES conference. So it starts off at like 14 minutes. They kind of go over a couple of recaps, history, growth, CPUs, Threadripper. They recap the Ryzen Mobile. They talk to Phil Spencer about console gaming. And they do all that through this 45 minutes. And then we get at 54.25, we get what everyone's been waiting for. Radeon 7. And they announced the price at $700 and it will be launching February 7th. And they do some performance benchmarks against the RTX 2080. And they show some specs, they play some games. And the first thing we get is 5521. We were just at that. And we get 60 compute units, and this is 1.8 gigahertz. This looks like the boost clock running up to 25% more performance, 16 gigabytes of HBM2, and that is a one terabyte memory bandwidth. So we get pretty high specs there, AMD FreeSync and all that good stuff. And this is on seven nanometer, as well as the CPUs we'll talk about in just a minute. And we get some 5605, we get some actual benchmark numbers. This is for content creation. So Adobe Premiere, some video editing, some OpenCL, 62% improvement there versus the Vega 64 card. We'll talk about 2080 in just a second. We get 57.45, we get some actual gameplay of them playing Devil May Cry at 4K. This is Devil May Cry 5, and they're getting between 80 and 120 FPS. Starts off a little lower, and then once they get into the combat, it hovers around 100 FPS mostly. And so that's good for 4K, I'd have to say. And then we get some actual comparisons versus the 2080, which is at... 59.25 and here we get Battlefield 5 so one more FPS that's a 0.5.4 percent improvement Far Cry 5 another one FPS and with the Vulcan games running Vulcan they are getting 87 versus 73 so if you're into RTX and ray tracing and you play those two games that support it one game that supports it go RTX 2080 if you're playing some Vulcan games like Doom or Strange Brigade go for Radeon 7 is basically what you should do, I guess. <laughs> so we also have some other little tidbits of information. We get at 102, they play The Division, and you also get that for free if you buy this card. You get two other games as well. And so they play some Division, you get 15 seconds of actual gameplay footage for that. So cool stuff there. And then we get a couple more little specs for Radeon 7, here's a little graph from AMD. Here's the Radeon 7 versus the 64 and the other ones. We get 1800 boost clock, like we said, HBM2, 4096 memory bus bits, and then again, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. That's quite a bit compared to other stuff. Uh, we don't know the power board, Vega 20, GPU, 699. Again, February 7th, this is coming out. And then you get three games with it. Um, the Division 2 and I forget the other two. I think there's a timestamp for that. And taking a quick break, we're gonna talk about the second gen Epic chip at 121.30. Man. So this is the world's first seven man nanometer data center CPU and we're getting a two times improvement performance per socket, four times a floating performance per socket. Those are pretty crazy. Uh, bolts of increase and then we get an actual benchmark at 12320. This is one 7 nanometer AMD Epic chip versus two Intel Xeon 8180s. And so one chip versus two and it beats it by around 15% they say. And this is 8.5 N uh, nanoseconds per day. They're doing some really crazy compute stuff. And so beats it by 15% and it's two CPUs versus the one. So pretty crazy for Epic. And this is coming at mid 2019, they say. And then jumping back into cool news, Ryzen third gen seven nanometer at 125.02. 
we get to see it on stage and everyone gets pretty clapped and excited and what we get here with that is she has a little picture in her hand she plays some games and we get a 8 core 16 thread CPU and they do some actual gameplay at 126.30 not too spectacular they show some FPS about 100 over 100 FPS but the GPU is at 98 99% so it looks like it's GPU bottleneck, not Ryzen 3000 series bottleneck. <laughs> so not quite sure what the whole point of that was, but we got a little gameplay. And then at 128.23, we get an actual benchmark versus the i9-9900K. So on the left is the i9 and the Ryzen is on the right and it completed first. And then one of the big things about not only beating it by a few points, go over score in a second, but the power consumption is 133 watts versus 179 watts. So they're saying 30% less power. And this benchmark is also with not finalized clocks for the Ryzen chip, the core chip. And that is versus the i9 with regular standard clocks and boosts. So all that stuff's going on over there. And the scores were for Ryzen 2057 versus 2040. So a 17 point lead for Ryzen. So competing with Intel's fast clocks. And we get some actual specs here. Here's the actual chip. This is the seven nanometer die, so the eight cores. And then this is a 14 nanometer IO, so it's gonna have all the operations and stuff and transferring the data to the computer and everything. So interesting, there's a couple more spots for seven nanometers, so eight cores, 16 cores. We'll go with 32 and more, so. Cool stuff there they could potentially add. And there isn't a super expected release date besides mid 2019 for this. And it's also the regular Ryzen socket. So if you have a Ryzen, C Ryzen board, just drop this in, they're saying. And that is pretty cool. At 1.30, we get to see some, here's some more they're talking about a little bit more. They show sizes of it. This is 40 millimeters. They get some close up pictures and in tech. So cool, get hyped for the Ryzen 3000 series. This is just a preview, they didn't, it's not finalized. The frequency obviously isn't tuned up and everything or tuned to where they're going to leave it at. So that's Ryzen 3000 and again, mid 2019 for that. It also has PCIe Gen 4 standards, the first CPU to support that. So as soon as they launch, you get super GPU performance, I guess. And that leads us into some game news a little bit more with the Division 2. And it's going to launch on not only Ubisoft, it's going to show up on the game store for Epic. So one of the first big titles coming to Epic's game store on 3-15-2019. And you're going to get the Standard Edition, all the Ultimate. I believe they talked about beta gameplay on this as well. So you'll be able to do that through there, through the Epic client and the game still requires Uplay account linking, so you'll still have to set that stuff up. Regional locking, Russian account language lock. Interesting there. And then we get a couple little more tidbits from the division. We get some performance, which is kind of interesting. They show what you recommended you'll need for a PC. And at 4K 60 FPS, they are recommending the AMD Ryzen Radeon 7. So you're going to want to, they also show a specification for recommended VRAM. So you're going to want 11 gigabytes. You're going to want more than a 2080, basically, because 2080s are 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So interesting that they added that little specification there. And I guess that's the whole point of putting 16 gigabytes of HBM2 on the Radeon 7. So that's, that's pretty crazy. And again, 16 gigabytes of just regular RAM for the 60 FPS elite mode. And then that's the little specifications. And then we get some other actual game stuff for Anthem. They show the Inceptor Javelin gameplay. This is from IGN. They get some speed and agility. They show off this suit that you can play with and some of the weapon stuff. It's just a short three minute thing, but that's, it's just more alpha gameplay if you're super hyped for Anthem. So check out that video. And then we have East Shade. This is the official trailer. This is a open world style game coming out February 13th for PC and you travel around as an artist and you paint stuff and you can unlock certain things by 
at least selling it to like villagers and stuff. And there's a couple things on the actual Steam page they talk about like game wise. So you want to unlock secrets through the paintings and traveling through the world. And then you're actually going to acquire crafting materials, possibly more painting or more uh, different schematics and stuff to paint. So interesting little adventure game if you're into open worldy exploration and I guess artist stuff too. Cool there. And then we have Embark on a Journey in the Unknown for Xbox One X Metro Saga Bundle. So you go get all three metros with this Xbox One X bundle, it's $500. But the cool part of this is Metro Exodus story trailer. So we get narration from the perspective of Anna. Fresh air in my lungs. And we get some so this two minute, two and a half minute trailer. So check that out if you're super hyped for Metro Exodus. It's coming out pretty soon. There's a date somewhere. February 15th. So get hyped for that and the little story trailer. There's probably gonna be more bonuses coming. And then we get a quick one from Yoshi, the Crafted World coming for Nintendo Switch. If you're a Nintendo fan and a Yoshi fan and all their cute little sounds and playing around. So basically here's a little gems and an evil little villain comes in and spreads them around the world. And then you and the other little Yoshis have to go save everybody. Cool little game news stuff from Nintendo Switch cool stuff there and that's March 29th that's coming a bunch of this is stuff trailers for coming and then Kirby extra epic yarn for 3ds if you're into that so that is your epic news for tech and AMD and all that good stuff for CPUs and that Radeon coming February 7th so we have a couple comments saying what's a nanometer it's a CPU JK JK uh, so so much news great job thanks thanks for you too uh, and we will have another episode at 3 p.m. Pacific with some more tech and game news tomorrow. Possibly another episode later tonight. So we're signing off. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew.